What's up, everybody, and welcome back to Fireside Giants. I'm your host, Anthony Rivardo, joined by my co-host, Alex Wilson and Daniel Jones. My, 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 what a 2022 season he just had, winning his first career postseason game, bringing the Giants to the playoffs for the first time since 2016, and winning the Giants their first playoff game since 2012. Daniel Jones got paid a massive bag. He got his bag four years, $160 million this offseason, and man, I believe that it was deserved. But the Giants were not just paying him for what he's done. They're paying him for what he's going to do. That was a large part of the investment that the Giants made. And Daniel Jones spoke with the New York Post this weekend, and he said that he is prepared to do a lot in 2023. He's feeling confident. He's feeling comfortable. And he thinks that the Giants can compete with anybody in the NFL. So we're going to go ahead today and talk about Daniel Jones, why he's primed for a big 2023 season, and react to some of those quotes from Jones that he uh, let out to the New York Post, talking about his mindset going into the season and just how comfortable he is. And I think that's the main point that I really want to hit on, Alex, once we dive into this, the comfortability of Daniel Jones. But before we dive into all of that good stuff, make sure to leave a like if you do enjoy this episode. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. Ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, please make sure to leave us a five-star review. Also, go follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Fireside Giants for daily New York Giants content on all your social media channels. Without further ado, Alex, how are you doing today, my friend? And what are your thoughts on Daniel Jones entering 2023? I'm doing great, man. You know, Daniel Jones is primed for a breakout year. You know, last year he obviously broke out in some ways. He was excellent on the ground. He ran the football really well. But the truth is simple. You know, Daniel Jones now has a little bit more weaponry to work with. You guys, you, you have guys like Jalen Hyatt. You have guys like Darren Waller. Saquon's definitely coming back, at least on the franchise tag. We're in good shape. Like this team definitely has more weaponry firepower to work with. And Daniel Jones should be a direct benefactor of those variables. If the offensive line improves, which we think it will with Evan Neal, he can't be much worse than last year. Um, I think we're in good shape. You know, John Michael Schmitz, huge upgrade at center, you know, massive upgrade there. Ben Bredesen, I think is a good left guard and healthy. And Mark Lewinsky, hopefully in the second year of this offensive scheme takes a big step forward. All in all, I feel like we're heading in the right direction and things are progressing at a rate where I feel like there's more positivity in the future for us and hopefully that extension we offered daniel jones was it four years it wasn't 80 mil, it was much more than that. four years 100 and something million 160 um, 40 per yeah 40 million per so you know that's a lot of cash uh but they front loaded it right two years they they have a pretty substantial um dead cap hit for him so if they wanted to move on after two years they could but best case scenario they don't and he remains the quarterback of this team and ends up becoming a franchise quarterback and really takes the team to another level but look Daniel Jones right now has a couple things working for him. He's got his legs. Huge factor to help this offense when it needs it most. The passing game. What is the biggest variable that we were missing last year? A downfield explosive, explosive attack. That is something that we have lacked severely in the most recent past. And to give you guys an idea of what he did last year when throwing the ball deep, he only had 26 attempts, 20 plus yards downfield. I'm pretty sure Josh Allen had something like 60 plus, you know, like there, there is not enough explosion on this offense. There needs to be more. That's why we have speedy guys like uh, Paris Campbell, like Jalen Hyatt, like Darren Waller. That's where these guys are going to uh, really capitalize and Darius Slayton as well. That speed downfield, it's going to force defenses to kind of uh, mark the deeper portions. And he actually was really good. He got his highest grade when throwing the ball uh, deep downfield of those 26 attempts. He completed nearly 40% of those guys, nearly 40%. I'm pretty sure that he had a higher percentage throwing deep downfield than Zach Wilson did throwing at zero to nine yards last year. So, you know, you're seeing the accuracy. He had what 359 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. They need to keep doing that. They need to keep throwing the ball downfield. If you, if you actually adjust his completion rate with drops included, he had a 46.2% adjusted completion rate. The guy was super accurate downfield. That's objectively true. So, Anthony, when you're looking at Dalen Jones, how important do you think it is this offense continues to develop the deeper downfield portion of this game, the explosive nature of this offense? I think it's the number one priority. It's the most important thing is for the Giants to develop that part of the offense, create more explosive plays, more big shots downfield, just more big plays in general, you know, whether it be on the ground or throwing the ball deep, but primarily throwing the ball deep and pushing the, the ball downfield. That's what Daniel Jones and the Giants need to focus on more. And all those players that you just mentioned, Jalen Hyatt, Darren Waller, Paris Campbell, they're going to help him do that. They're going to help this offense get the ball downfield. And another thing that they also do 
one of one of the underrated aspects rather of the pushing the ball downfield that the Giants haven't been able to reap the benefits of is the fact that it opens things up underneath. You know, once you have Jalen Hyatt out there, just an absolute burner running down the sideline, uh, pushing that safety back. That safety is just going to have to creep a little further back pre-snap, and that's going to create a couple extra yards, and that right there is where Darren Waller just runs a nice curl route, catches the ball, turns upfield. There you go, 20-yard gain, catch and run. So it opens things up underneath for you as well by having more of a deep attacking offense because when you look at those teams like the Kansas City Chiefs, the Buffalo Bills, they can air the ball out with will. You know They've got Patrick Mahomes slinging the ball 75 yards, Josh Allen slinging at 65 on a down by down basis but they also have a bunch of these shifty receivers who can catch the ball underneath turn up field and there you go there's 30 yards because they just turn the slant or a drag route or a hitch route into a big gain after the catch and that's just because they have such deep deep ball presence in that offense such an aerial attack downfield that those defenses have to inch a little bit back and it opens things up underneath so that's something that the Giants they need more of they need to throw the ball downfield more and again not only will they generate more big plays through deep passing concepts, they will also generate big plays from catching and running in the short to intermediate portion. Another thing, though, and this is why I want to talk about the comfortability of Daniel Jones. There's often been said, why don't the Giants push the ball downfield more? Well, it's because of their offensive line. The offensive line is not good enough to do that. Well, the offense doesn't call for it, right? When Jason Garrett was here, he didn't know how to create together um, good passing concepts to push the ball downfield. Mike Kafka certainly can, coming from the Kansas City tree. But last year, the Giants didn't really do it. Maybe Daniel Jones wasn't comfortable in the first year of this offense. And also, the offensive line was pretty bad last year. But the offensive line will be better this year. John Michael Schmitz is stepping in at center. That's an upgrade. Evan Neal entering year two. He should be a much improved player. So that should also be an upgrade. And hopefully we get an upgrade at left guard. Either Ben Bredesen steps in full time and plays better or Joshua Zito blows us out of the water and he's an upgrade at the left guard spot. Regardless, the Giants pass protection is going to be better. Their playmakers are better. They have guys who are faster, who can get open on a more frequent basis. So you take all of these different variables, you combine them together. The Giants are going to have more deep passing opportunities here. But it really does come down to how comfortable is Daniel Jones? Is he comfortable in this pocket? Is he comfortable throwing to these weapons? Well, this is one of those moments where you have to think that Daniel Jones is the most comfortable he's ever been at any point in his career. And in fact, he kind of said that to the New York Post recently, saying this quote when asked what what could he have done earlier in his career? He said he could have been a little bit more comfortable. And right now he said, quote, I don't know, maybe I'm a little bit older and a little bit more comfortable now. End quote. So Daniel Jones comfortability is the number one thing. He even said in that quote that he wasn't comfortable these past few years. I don't blame him. How could he be? Zero continuity on the offensive line. Playmakers like Kenny Galladay, who could not get open no matter who was covering them. I could have been covering Kenny Galladay and probably gotten an interception on him or at least some sort of pass breakup. He just could not get open. So now Daniel Jones has these playmakers. He has his pass protection. And he's entering the second year of an offensive scheme that's actually good. And genuinely good offensive scheme, not Pat Shermer's scheme, not Jason Garrett's scheme, but Mike Kafka and Brian Dable have crafted a good offensive scheme. Going into year two, Daniel Jones is comfortable. And again, I think that is the most important thing for him to be going into the season. And also, he looks more confident than ever. Daniel Jones out there jumping on stage at concerts and singing along with the lead singer. Like, he just looks like the man now. Ever since he got paid, he's got that new swagger, that new money swag that Sterling Shepard said he doesn't have. I disagree, Shep. I think that Daniel Jones has it, and I'm really banking on him to have a big 2023 season based on his comfortability, his confidence, and his drive to work hard and win football games. So, Alex, when you're looking at that aspect of Daniel Jones, his comfortability, how uncomfortable he used to be, and how now he's acknowledging that he used to be uncomfortable and is more comfortable now, what kind of an impact do you think that comfortability is going to play into his game this season? I mean, look, they've committed to him. You know what I mean? Like anyone with that type of feeling of not knowing what their future holds, not knowing where they're going to go, is going to be a little worried. The Giants said to him, we trust you, man. We love your work ethic. We're giving you a bag. We're giving you a big damn bag. And we're going to see if you can carry the weight now. And ultimately, when it comes to Daniel Jones, he's proven that he has the quality to do it. You know, like he has a good arm, objectively. He has good legs. He can do these things. Um, and, and ultimately, the question is, can the decision-making continue to improve? You know, that's been the biggest con about Daniel Jones over the past couple of years, the turnovers. You know, 
Can he get those turnovers out of his game? Last year, he proved that he could. Last year, he showed really good composure in the pocket. He made very few bad decisions. Um, and he made some really nice tosses. And he has some zip on his passes. We need guys that can catch the freaking football. Because he throws lasers, you know? He's not a 50-50 thrower. He needs to throw it with speed, velocity, downfield, or in, in between zones, in between gaps. That's where he really thrives. He's really good on those out routes. He's really good at throwing to the boundary. Um, he has really good zip on his passes. And I think that's where we're going to see. The guy has, like, unrelenting work ethic. He wants to be a great quarterback. Back, and we all think he can be. You know, there were there was a time where we were all very concerned because the decision makings were poor, the consistency was off. But I think I learned one thing, like a really important thing actually, from those past days, and it was that a lot of his struggles were coaching related. You know what I mean? You see what the Giants have done last year to help him attack his strengths. You know, D Dave Gettleman said it all the time, and, and it's kind of funny because like Dave Gettleman said this one thing and did the exact opposite fitting square pegs into round holes. He did the exact opposite of that. He kept saying it and kept doing it. Um, and ultimately, Daniel Jones was putting in an offense that was not revolving around his skill set. And uh, the Giants kind of utilized that uh, this past off, this past season on the ground, through the air. Now you add the explosive element to this offense. You add the idea that you cannot stack the box against us. You can't just stop Saquon Barkley and stop our offense. You got to watch Paris Campbell with 4 3 speed. You got to watch Darius Slayton with blazing speed. You got to watch one of the most athletic tight ends in Darren Waller in the game on this offense now. And that's not even hitting on Wandell Robbins' agility when he comes back. That's not even that's not even hitting on Sterling Shepard on a veteran minimum deal, who is still a good player that I think people are writing off. That's not even hitting on Daniel Bellinger, who's going to be a tremendous security blanket for Daniel Jones underneath while Darren Waller is working out of this jumbo slot or working out wide. And you have these crisscrossing routes, you have these crossing concepts in nine routes. How are you going to stop this team? You know what I mean? Now, I'm not going to say I'm not going to say here and guarantee success because that's stupid and we've learned from that mistake in the past, but I will say based on the way we structured our offense last year, not even hit on Isaiah Hodgins for what it's worth, but the way that we constructed our offense last year really built into the mentality of attacking our player strengths and focusing on them. You know, we're not trying to make a player do something. There's a reason Kenny Galladay made $17 million sitting on the bench last year is because he did not play into the strengths of the scheme and he did not have the qualities the Giants were looking for on offense. Every single player that they've added to the mix, every single piece, puzzle piece of the equation has a purpose. Every single person has a purpose now. We're not just paying guys because they did well elsewhere. We're paying guys because they deserved it and they fit exactly what we're trying to do. Speed, 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 athleticism. Those are the two major variables that I've seen on the offense that we are improving upon, and I think it's going to pay off in dividends this upcoming season. 1,000%. I couldn't agree with you more. Also, here's a fun fact that I didn't know. Daniel Jones has a beard now. Did you know that? I just saw a recent picture of him. He's growing out some facial hair. Looks like a brand He's new He's too man. confident. He's too yeah. confident. <laughs> this guy's about to turn into a star. He's about to become one of the best quarterbacks I in the so. NFL now. I'm convinced. He just looks super confident. He's exuding confidence and i just gotta say it's really really exciting to see that he's really coming into his own here i mean he's been in the league for four years now he was booed on drafts tonight he received heady heavy heavy criticism throughout the first three years of his career but in year four he started to put it all together and i think that right now year five he's got his money and he's got his playmakers i think that the confidence that daniel jones has it's justified he deserves to be confident and i think that he's ready to take a big step forward this year but i will say some of these quotes are getting me fired up for football season. When he was asked about Demarcus Lawrence saying he doesn't feel like it's a big gap at all between the Cowboys and the Eagles, how close are the Giants is what Daniel Jones was asked. He said, quote, we're confident and we know we can compete with anybody, end quote. And that's the quote of the day for me. I love to hear that. Love to hear our quarterback say we can compete with anybody. Not, oh, you know, we're, we're a good team. We're going to go out there and do our best. Now we're going to compete with anybody, and I believe in that too. I think that the Giants do have a roster, and they do have the coaching staff necessary to compete with anybody and hopefully go out there, compete with those Eagles, compete with those Cowboys, do better in the division because – when we look back on this 2022 season, yeah, we made significant progress. Won nine games, went to the postseason, but a 1-4-1 and one division record, that's not really good enough. That's not sustainable. That's a, It's a shocker that we made it to the postseason after winning only one divisional game. So going into 2023, that's got to be the priority for the Giants is beating the division. They need to improve that divisional record. And also just from the confidence level of the Giants fans. God damn, does it suck to lose to the Cowboys, to the Eagles, and of course, Washington. We need to see the Giants win more divisional games. But 
talking about OTAs, Daniel Jones said, we feel like we made progress last year and took a step, but what we, what we do from this point on, you start over. It's about what you do now. We had a good spring, and we have to roll that into training camp and make sure we do everything that we can. And that's exciting for me because training camp is right around the corner. They just announced it yesterday. July 26th, training camp will be kicking off. I'm sure many of you will be in attendance at all of those open practices to be determined whether or not I will be in attendance at any of them. But as we inch closer and closer towards training camp, we get closer and closer to seeing a bearded Daniel Jones throw passes to Darren Waller in front of a live audience. And that is thrill seeking. That is going to thrill me. I'm going to be enthralled by the footage of Daniel Jones slinging passes to Daniel to Darren Waller in front of the fans. So, you know, Alex, when you're when you're kind of contemplating on these Daniel Jones quotes and really looking at where the Giants can improve in the division. How important is it for Daniel Jones to kind of conquer this division? He hasn't really won any games against the Eagles. Maybe he has one win against the Eagles in his career. Not many against the Cowboys for sure. He's kind of dominated Washington, but it's Washington. They're kind of like the ugly stepchild in the equation here, you know, with these other uh, Titans in the NFC East over the past few years. They don't even have a name, man. They don't even have a name. They're about to change their name again. They might change their name again. Again, I read that the, the commanders was trademarked or something, but you know, back on track here. Daniel Jones needs to start beating the division. What are your thoughts on that? The Cowboys are beatable, guys. Like, we can beat the freaking Cowboys. Dak Prescott, I feel like we've seen his ceiling. I feel like he's not going to get much better than he is. Um, Our defense is improving. If we can stop their offense, it really, we just get a... Honestly, against the Cowboys, I think we aren't losing because they're better than us. I think we're losing because the hype is getting to us. Like, the expectations are getting to us. Like, the importance of the game is getting to us. But I feel like this team now has a little bit more gusto, has a little bit more confidence in themselves. Um, I think that they know they can win. You know what I mean? I think that we're going to see a much better version of the Giants against the Cowboys in the coming years. The Eagles, they're just a superpower right now. Like They're a, they're a freaking super team. Like You can't really beat them um, at their own game. You have to get creative, and you have to get lucky at times. Like The Eagles are just really good. And in, in ultimately, the reality is two things. If our pass rush and our offensive line don't protect and they don't get to the quarterback, we're going to lose. Like That's objectively the the unfortunate reality we need those two units to step up and play exceptionally um that's how you win games against the eagles these days you got to beat them in the trenches on both sides of the ball uh because if you can get to jalen hurts you can cause turnovers but the question is like can we get to jalen hurts their offensive line is always so good uh so that's kind of the the issue there but yeah like daniel jones i mean look making the playoffs is just amount of just as important to uh win in the division as it is anywhere outside of the division so it's going to be a big big variable look we can sweep Washington who are getting better I think and we can beat the crap out of the Cowboys and make the playoffs because you know we won a couple divisional games but it's going to be tough like we have a really good division you know what I mean the Giants are on the up and coming the Cowboys are always pretty solid Um, the Eagles are really freaking good right now like our division is exceptionally good and I think Washington's taken some big steps forward as well so is is it going to be easy no but you got to be good teams to win championships you know you can't coast your way to the championships uh, in any sport, you know, you have to beat good teams to get there. And if the Giants can't beat those good teams, then there's no reason in considering them contenders. So we got to go into Philadelphia. We got to go into Dallas, got to go into Washington. And we got to kick some butt. That's the ultimate reality. And again, it's not just Daniel Jones. It's a team sport. Everybody has to show up. It just can't be one player. Evan Neal got to show up at right tackle. You know what I mean? Like Saquon, he always does his best. I respect that from him a lot. On the defensive side, our pass rushers, Aziz, got to stay healthy. Kayvon Thibodeau, got to be consistent. Linebackers, stop the freaking run. You know, Bobby Okereke, love the dude. Such a good guy. Really excited about him. He's got to step up, and we think he will. Um, you know, Deontay Banks, step up in, in, in big moments. You're a rookie. You know, have some big plays. Adoree Jackson, show you're a CB1. Xavier McKinney, get some interceptions. It's a team sport, guys. Can't win this as a solo guy. We place a lot of blame on individuals, but the truth is, it's a, it's a team effort, and you lose as a team, and you win as a team. It is a team sport. It is the ultimate team sport is the sport of football. But thankfully, the Giants have a great leader leading this team in Daniel Jones. He talked about Saquon Barkley a little bit. We won't dive too deeply into that. But he said Saquon is working hard. He's always going to be in good shape. He's always going to look good. Sounds like Daniel Jones might have a little bit of a man crush on his teammate Saquon Barkley. I don't blame him. So do I. But he also mentioned that he's getting in some off-season work with some of the teammates soon. We know that Daniel Jones hosted that training session, that throwing session out in Arizona. Saquon was in attendance. Um, Of course, Darren Waller was in in attendance as well, and so were so many of the Giants' teammates uh, of Daniel Jones. But 
He said that he's not done. He's going to be having another training session between now and training camp. Again, training camp July 26th, but right now it's only June 28th. So he has a full month here where the Giants won't be gathering in the facilities. So Daniel Jones said, quote, we're going to get together pretty soon and get some work in. We've gone down to Charlotte in the past, and I think that's the plan again. End quote. So we've seen that pretty much every year we see Daniel Jones go out with a bunch of receivers and tight ends over to Duke University and throw the ball around and practice for the upcoming season. And that's something that he's going to continue to do. I was reading quotes recently of Sterling Shepard talking about Daniel Jones saying he's still in the he's still in the building early in the morning. He's still the first one in here. He's still working hard. The money did not change his work ethic. And so you just add all that stuff together, man, the confidence that he has after getting this contract and having the Giants buy into him. And of course, his work ethic and the improved roster around him. I'm really excited for this upcoming season, man. I think that Daniel Jones is going to take that big jump forward that we just mentioned. But Alex, you know, before we wrap, what are your closing thoughts? Kind of just on the fact that Daniel Jones and the team teammates are going to be getting together at some point between now and training camp to practice. And what kind of impact do you think that can have paying off once we get over to the regular season? I mean, it's always a good thing to have uh, games and, and you're just kind of practices against other teams because it's not your team. Like, you know, your tendencies of your DBs, you know, the, D- the tendencies of your quarterback. It's just, what the best way to put it is unpredictable. You know, there's a reason that uh, the coaching staff last year would like tell Daniel Jones what was coming and something else would come. Like there's a reason they're trying to get in his head. Um, and I think that ultimately like practices like that, it allows you to be competitive. It allows you to kind of show your best self, allows you to kind of get some game spirit in there, but also just the unpredictability of it is what real life, you know, football is all about. Like you need to be prepared for the unexpected and it gives them a little bit of a taste of that before preseason, before um, regular season rolls around. And I think ultimately that's just a good thing objectively. Yeah, and I'm in complete agreement with you. I think it's going to be really interesting. I think the Giants are going to be practicing with the Detroit Lions during training camp, so that should be uh, an exciting little little event to keep an eye on. You know, again, like you mentioned, going up against a different talent than your own, that's always important. But got to say, I'm loving Daniel Jones's quotes. I'm loving his beard. I'm loving his confidence, and I am ready for this season, man. And, of course, we're going to be updating you on everything about Daniel Jones, whether or not he shaves the beard or if he grows it out, and how well he plays the season right here on fireside giant so make sure to leave a like if you did enjoy this episode subscribe to the channel if you are new ring the bell so you don't miss an episode and comment your thoughts on the topic down below in the comment section and if you're listening on apple or spotify please make sure to leave us a five-star review also go ahead and follow us on instagram and twitter at fireside giants for daily new york giants content coming your way on social media every single day but without further ado we will catch you all in the next one have a good one and let's go giants (music) 